I'm Dr. James Hayes and welcome to Healthy Pet Show on Old Fashioned Health Network. Today we're going to talk about pet diets. There are four things that I want to hit on and the first of those is what do we feed our pet? I get asked all the time, you know, do I feed wet food, do I feed dry food? And rightfully so, the first thing that we think about when we get a new pet is what are we going to feed them? And so a lot of people think that by feeding a dry food, that that's going to uh, uh, limit us from having to take our pet to the vet to get the teeth cleaned. And that's not actually true. While the, the dry food will provide mechanical abrasion to the teeth and kind of help to uh, scour some of that dental tartar off, remember it's still food, particles get stuck there, and as the food absorbs the moisture in the mouth and in the saliva, it does become wet or soft and moist and sticks to the teeth. So by feeding a dry food, you're not necessarily uh, preventing uh, the need to take your pet to get the teeth cleaned. Um, another thing to consider, especially for cats, Cats in the wild are strict carnivores, so they don't, you don't see them eating uh, plants, berries, vegetables, things like that. And so new literature suggests that cats should be fed uh, primarily canned or wet food. Um, this increases the amount of moisture in their diet and also decreases the amount of carbohydrates, which is really important when you think about some of the diseases that cats potentially can be predisposed to. The second thing that I want to talk to you about is life stage and activity level. So these are things that are very important when we discuss what type of diet should I feed my pet. We always see things like, you know, puppy or kitten formula versus something that's for a more senior pet. Uh, young animals, they need uh, diets that are higher in protein, higher in minerals, and that helps to support healthy growth. But when we get older, we don't need as much protein, um, and that a lot of that goes to waste. So we want to make sure that we talk with our veterinarian about the correct diet and the correct composition of that diet to suit our pet's lifestyle. So if we have a diet that's approved by AFCO or the Association of American Feed Control Officials, then we know that that is a diet that meets all of the standard requirements for your pet. And if you have a diet that is AFCO approved, there will always be a marking or a statement somewhere on the packaging. So the third point is for the owners that like to have more of a hands-on approach when feeding their pets. A lot of us like to cook things, or like to let our pets eat what we eat, uh, and some of us even like the raw diet, which I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not against. You know, there are a lot of benefits for, uh, from the raw diet, even as far as like a, the, the bond and the relationship between you and your pet. So when it comes to preparing your pet's own food, you need to make sure that they're getting all the nutrition that they require. A lot of times when we're feeding things, we're just doing strictly meats or strictly uh, vegetables. A lot of us like to have our pets on uh, a vegetarian diet, especially if we're ourselves vegetarians. You need to make sure that your pet is getting all the required nutrition to support body function and growth. So consult with your veterinarian to make sure that you're feeding them the appropriate amounts of foods. And sometimes it might require supplements with vitamins and minerals, things like that. Uh, also, when it comes to raw diets, you need to make sure to take your own personal health into consideration as well. Not only the bacteria that is on this raw meat and these raw vegetables can affect your pet's health, but now your pet becomes uh, kind of like a, a living harborer of these organisms, these bacteria. And so when the pet licks you in the mouth or walks around, maybe drools on, on spots on the furniture, those places become contaminated as well. And that's especially important when we're talking about young children, the elderly, and those that have compromised immune systems. So so while I'm not against uh, feeding a raw diet, you need to make sure that it's done under the guise of your veterinarian. And finally, I want to talk about prescription diets. These are diets that for the most part should not be fed to healthy pets. These are diets that your veterinarian will prescribe to help treat certain medical conditions. As we know from human health, diet plays a huge part as far as the role in our overall health. So it's no surprise that we make modifications to the diets when we have pets that are sick as well. Uh, but again, this is only uh, available from your veterinarian, so it does require a consultation and pretty regular follow-ups with your veterinarian as well. So we've gone over four main topics to consider when choosing the right diet for your pet. Remember, you play a vital role in the care of your pet, and together with your veterinarian, we can ensure that your pet is a healthy pet.